I'm not sure there's anything more boring or potentially discouraging when approaching new software than learning the interface and the particular weirdnesses uh, of the software in question. I know that I've given up on plenty in the past, um, but the thing to remember is that software like Maya that we'll be discussing here is a tool for artistic expression and for technical creativity. And like any tool, you have to learn how to hold it first before you can wield it with any sort of finesse. So in this video, and a few others like it, I'll go over the basics of Maya and what you're faced with when you first launch the program. I won't talk exhaustively about everything, but in particular those areas I do turn to most in my generalist production strategy. I'm a great believer in learning through practice, so find something you want to make and just make it. These videos are meant to be a start, but it's up to you to take what you learn and put it into practice. So what we're looking at here is the interface of Maya 2017, Update 3, and I'm working on Windows. So depending on the version of Maya that you have, uh, things might look a little bit different. And I also have strayed from the default settings over my time of using Maya, so there may be occasions when things look a little bit different. And things have changed since previous versions of Maya. Things will change in the next version of Maya. Um, but there are some constants that we can rely on, and that's what we'll look at here. So <clears throat> let's look at the elements of the interface. Now, Maya is a very deep program, and there are a lot of menus you can see here up at the top. Um, and one thing to note is that these first seven menus up to where it says Windows, these ones will always be here. The rest of these are based on which module you're in. So in Maya, in this drop-down uh, menu set here, you can choose the different modules, modeling for creating new objects, rigging for preparing things for animation, animation actually for animating things, FX for doing things like procedural animation or uh, dynamic animation, rendering, so turning your things into uh, 2D images or animations, and some other things here. So you'll note that when I change to rigging, all of these menus change, but everything to the left of Windows, including Windows, stays the same. So there are lots of ways to get lost in Maya because there are so many different things. Uh, one of the great things about Maya is that it has long had this interface option called the hotbox. So if you just have your mouse over one of these views into your scene, and we're looking at a Homo erectus skull here just for visual interest while we're talking, um, but these are called viewports, and you can see there are more menus here, these viewport menus, and a bunch of shortcuts to do other things, and we'll come uh, to all these things in time. But with your mouse over one of these viewports, if you just hold down the space bar, you will get access to this thing called the hotbox. And it has every menu item in it, or at least it should um, if you're at the default settings. Um, and so everything can be found here. And after a while, when you're working in Maya a lot, you may abandon use of all these um, menu sets up here and just resort to the hotbox because you could turn this off so you don't have to see it, give yourself some more screen real estate. There are other things in the hotbox here. You can see these lines going off here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, defining different quadrants around the hotbox. If you go into these areas and hold down left or right uh, mouse button, you can get access to other options. So Maya also has, in addition to all the menus here and the hotbox, contextual menu options. So depending where your mouse is on the screen with the hotbox open or with the hotbox closed, if you right click over top of an object, you'll get contextual menu items for this object. So there are lots of ways to access everything you need the trick is knowing where to find it and knowing what you need at any point. But we'll get to that. So you'll notice that I jumped from this view, where we see four views of the same object, to a single view. And that's using the spacebar too. If you just tap your spacebar, you will toggle between your different views. So now if I have my uh, mouse over the top view and hit the spacebar, we'll toggle to full screen of that view. 
and to get back we just tap the space bar again you'll see the hotbox comes up very quickly and if you hold down the space bar that's when the hotbox comes up but if you just tap it it jumps from screen to screen and this is a, an incredibly useful workflow item it's easy to navigate around you don't want to get stuck on these little things so let's just do a quick run through of some important areas on the screen here so we looked at the menus up here just below it uh, where we have our uh, menu modules here over to this way we've got what's called the status line and there's lots of stuff in here some useful some not so much you got all the normal opening and saving uh, files really you're going to use shortcuts for that you can even hide that so you can toggle these things off and on with these little spacers here uh, this is to interact with your object on based on its uh, object mode or based on the components that make it up this is very useful that will and this will come up later on these are selection masks so if I don't want to select polygon objects I can turn off polygon selection if I don't want to select joints or curves I can turn these off and on so again this is stuff that will come up later on but that's important here's snapping so if you want to snap to objects or to parts of the screen this is useful rendering and some input options when you want to place something in the middle of the world, rename things. Anyway, these will also come up as we move along. Below that, we've got the shelf and a bunch of tabs here. And this gives you another way to access menu items, but with iconography rather than just a verbal description of the tool or the um, function. Um, you can see I've got a custom one where I've got some things I use all the time in here, and we'll look at doing that later creating curves, creating polygons, sculpting, and so on. This can be very useful when you're learning Maya, but after a while, uh, I find that I don't use it that much, except for things like sculpting, for example, where it's actually quite useful to have a visual representation of what the sculpting tool does. Anyway, you'll find your own way through this. But <clears throat> what's more important, if we see over here to the... Um, right side of the screen this is called the channel box and you might not see this right away but there's some tabs down the side here and you can click on the one that says channel box and this gives us some information about things that are selected on screen so if i select the calvarium of the homo erectus here this tells us where it's located uh, relative to its original position how it's been rotated its scale and so on and then below here we have information about the shape of the object. You can't really access anything here. And then down here we'll get other types of information. So for example, if I create a new object, just create a polygon sphere. Now it shows us the name of the object, its location, that it has a shape, and then it's got some inputs. And this is its construction history. Um, and we'll get into this more, but down here we'll find all the things that go into making an object, and you can go back and change these things um, as, as you go along. So there's a construction history that allows you to make changes based on past steps in production. So this is important to get some high-level information about an object. The attribute editor is another really important thing, and this shows different nodes in Maya. Now Maya is a node has a node-based architecture where each object and each function and parts of objects and things have different nodes and they're connected through their attributes. And this allows you to make very complex networks of things and be very technically creative. So we'll spend a lot of time here in the attribute editor, so the polysphere. Uh, we still have the history on this so we can change its original radius that it was created at, subdivisions, and so on. The other really important window that you use for everything is called the Outliner. And anything you want to find here is under the Windows menu. If we go into Outliner, this is just a list of everything in our scene. So we have my Homo erectus calvarium, a camera I made, a cube, a polygon sphere, and just some other tactical stuff going on that we don't really have to worry about too much. But if you know these things, then you know enough to get started. Channel box, attribute editor, outliner, and all of the access to the menus in the various ways. So now knowing this, we can move forward and start to create and manipulate objects in Maya.